It is officially fall and it is officially soup season. Today I'm sharing with you a bunch of my amazing soup recipes from my new cookbook, Enjoy. This has so many amazing recipes, but I will say my soup recipes are like freakishly good. I am so proud of them because they are the best soups. I have a really hard time eating soup at like anyone's house because my soup recipes are so good. So I hope you'll try them. Let's start with the first recipe. It is a white chicken chili. It is so good. You can do it on the stove top really easy or you can do it in the Instant Pot and it's super quick. First, start out by sauteing the onion and the chicken. And you can actually skip this step if you are low on time. So you just dump everything into the Instant Pot, so easy. But first press the saute button and then we're going to add about a tablespoon of butter or oil and then saute the onion and garlic for about five minutes. You just need one large onion and about two teaspoons of minced garlic. Next, while that is sauteing, you want to season one large chicken breast or you can add an extra chicken breast if you want more protein in this dish with one and a half teaspoons of cumin, one and a half teaspoons of salt, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. If you like it a little bit spicier, you can add more cayenne pepper, but I wouldn't omit it completely because it adds a lot of flavor, not just spice. Add your seasoned chicken to the onion and just saute everything for about five minutes. There will be brown bits on the bottom of the pan, but that's totally fine because after this sauteys, we are going to add two cups of chicken broth. What I like to do is deglaze the pot first with the chicken broth and then scrape any brown bits off the bottom of the pot. That's two cups of chicken broth and I like to use water, just mix with better than bouillon. After you make sure all of that fond is scraped off the bottom of the pot because you don't want it to burn. Add one four ounce can of chopped green chilies, or you can add two if you want it to be just a tiny bit spicier. I like to usually do a larger can because I like the spice. Next, add two cans of great northern beans that have been drained and rinsed. And then I like to add one cup of corn and I like to use frozen corn. I prefer frozen over canned. I just think it has a better flavor and texture, but just use one cup of corn. And that's really all there is to it. Turn off the saute mode, then lock the lid and turn the knob to the ceiling position. Press the manual or pressure cook button and adjust it to two minutes. This doesn't have to cook very long at all because everything is kind of sauteed. It just needs to cook everything through. If you don't want to use an Instant Pot, that's totally fine. You can do this on the stove. You just follow all of the steps that we've done so far and then just let the simmer on the stove for about 10 minutes. That's all we really need in order to get that chicken all the way cooked through and the onions nice and cooked soft. And then you add the rest of the ingredients. So after pressure cooking, you're going to take the lid off and then you add in one cup of sour cream and one cup of heavy cream. If you don't like the dairy, you can also just substitute it for two cups of additional chicken broth while you are cooking. And then you can add like sour cream on the side if you want it to stay dairy free. We love this served with some corn bread or some corn chips, tortilla chips. It's really good and everyone loves it, even the kids. If it's too spicy for your own taste, then you can add a little bit of extra sour cream or heavy cream to your individual portion or to the finished dish. But I like to kind of play it by ear because like the kids don't like it too spicy, but I really like it spicy. I feel like I've made this recipe just right in the middle so it's perfect for anyone. And that's this beautiful white chicken chili. I hope you enjoy. Again, you can find this recipe in my new cookbook. It's beautiful, it's stunning and that is ready to pre-order now. This next recipe is the absolute best and last tomato soup recipe you're going to need. It's my tomato basil soup. Now this starts out with browned butter and it ends with like basil pesto. It's packed with vegetables and it is so good. This is not just like tomato soup that you get from a can. It is luscious and luxurious and it has such a beautiful flavor. So I'm so excited to share with you today. So first press the saute button on your pressure cooker or instant pot and adjust it to medium. Now this is different because I almost always have it on high, but we're going to add one whole stick of butter. It's half a cup of butter to the Instant Pot and we want to let it melt down and brown. We want it to get warm, nutty, and delicious tasting. I usually swirl it or stir it occasionally to get like even distribution so then it doesn't burn, but you'll know when it's ready when it gets brown or golden, a little foamy on top, and it smells a little bit nutty and definitely not burned. So to this, you wanna add four stalks of diced 
sliced celery, one medium onion, a pound of chopped carrots, and two tablespoons of minced garlic. Saute the vegetables for about five minutes until they get kind of just nice and brown and a little bit soft. After that, you want to make a well in the center of your vegetables by just pressing everything over to the sides of the pot and then add one six ounce can of tomato paste. We want to cook down the tomato paste and kind of just enhance those flavors, but you want to make sure that this does not burn. So make sure that your Instant Pot setting is still on that medium setting. After all of your vegetables are covered in the tomato paste and it's cooked down a bit, we want to deglaze the pot with one cup of chicken broth. Now this is really important because if you don't deglaze the pot, it is going to burn and you won't be able to cook your tomato soup. Next, add two 15 ounce cans of diced tomatoes, one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, a tablespoon of sugar, one cup of basil pesto, and my favorite is the one that you get at Costco. This is, has like the best flavor and it's also usually the best value. One teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. Just give that a stir all over and then we are going to cook this. Now you can actually slow cook this in a crock pot, but I like to do this in an instant pot because it is way faster. So you want to lock the lid and turn the knob to sealing, then press the manual or pressure cook button and adjust this to 20 minutes. I know this is like kind of a long cook time, especially for a soup, but we wanna cook down all of those vegetables extremely, extremely soft because we're going to puree them in the next step. So after the pressure cooking, you wanna allow a 10 to 15 minute natural pressure release so then you don't have tomato sauce spewing out of your Instant Pot. And then this is just the very end. You want to use an immersion blender to blend the whole soup together. If you don't have an immersion blender, then what you can do is do this in about three batches in a high powered blender by just putting, you know, batches of the spinach soup into the blender and making sure it is vented a little bit so then it doesn't go everywhere. After that, return it all back to the Instant Pot or if you're using an immersion blender, you're pretty much done at this point. You just want to end by adding half a cup of heavy cream to the recipe and it just rounds everything out and it gives it a beautiful creamy taste. This is seriously one of the best tomato soup recipes ever. I honestly refuse to eat it from any other place. It is so good with a grilled cheese or some crusty bread and I know it's gonna be one of your new go-to favorites. And again, this one is also in my cookbook, Enjoy, that is ready to pre-order. We're going to start out with six cups of water and I have this preheated so it might bubble a little bit. This recipe is really easy because you just throw everything in a pot and let it boil. And I always do better than bouillon. If you don't use better than bouillon, you can use chicken broth, but I do recommend that you use a better quality chicken broth because that's like one of the main flavors in this soup. So you wanna make sure that you're using something that tastes really good, not like a junky like powdered chicken bouillon. Try and use either a boxed bone broth or better than bouillon. Have this on high heat because we just want it to come to a boil. To this, I'm adding about a teaspoon or two of minced garlic and about a teaspoon or two of fresh grated ginger. If you don't have grated ginger, you can use powdered, but the fresh ginger really makes a huge difference, so I do recommend that you get it. I always just buy a knob of fresh, I usually try and go organic with the ginger in a knob like this, and you can peel if you want, like just kind of peel off some of the skin either with a spoon or with your grater to the side like this. And then I just keep this whole knob of garlic frozen in my freezer and then grate it into like any and every recipe I can because it's so good. After you learn how to make this egg drop soup, you'll never buy it at the store or a restaurant. To this, I'm just adding some chopped green onions. This is about four stalks of them, but you can do as little or as much as you want. I just like to kind of go heavy. I usually do about half in the soup and then I like to top each bowl with a little bit. Okay, and then to that we'll also add, I put like about an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, depending on how spicy you like it. It doesn't give a ton of spice, but it does give some good flavor if you like it spicier, you can always add extra. And then I also like to do some corn because it gives it a little bit of sweetness and texture. I like to do about a cup and I prefer frozen corn over canned corn. It just has a much better flavor and texture. If you have like some minced chicken or minced pork, you can definitely add that in. That would be really good as well. And then I'll just do a tablespoon of soy sauce. I like to use low sodium soy sauce, but it's 
it's up to you. Okay, and then lastly, just a little bit of white pepper. If you don't have white pepper, just use a little bit of salt and pepper. So next, while we're waiting for this to boil, we are going to crack four eggs into a, I like to use just a Pyrex because it's easy to pour. Okay, so while that's going, you wanna whisk up the eggs. And I like to whisk them up pretty well, but you don't want to like blend them in a blender or make them too whipped. This is almost boiling, but I wanted to give a couple pointers with this recipe. So number one, as it is written on my website, it has a cornstarch slurry at the end, which makes it nice and thick. But if you don't want to add those carbs and calories, you can omit that. I almost never do the cornstarch myself because I'm making this all the time. I never measure anything. And I find that the thickness is perfectly fine with just the eggs. But I know most people prefer a little bit of a thicker egg drop soup. So that's why I have it written like that. And it's delicious both ways. Second is there are a couple key ingredients in this dish. So like I mentioned, make sure you start with a good quality chicken broth or something that actually tastes really good because that is one of the main flavors in this. The other thing is make sure you use a good sesame oil. So this is like the only brand of sesame oil I use. It's Kadoya and it's from Japan. So maybe I'm a little biased, but it really is like the most delicious flavor. Uh, sesame oil, it's amazing quality. So if you can try and find this one, definitely try to get this. They come in smaller bottles too. So the thing that you definitely need, like if you don't have garlic, you can use garlic powder. If you don't have fresh ginger, you can use ginger powder. But if you don't have sesame oil, like don't even bother making this soup. If you don't have eggs, obviously don't bother making this soup because it's egg drop soup. And then I love to have fresh green onions. It makes it really fresh and like fragrant. You really need that, I think. So you could maybe get away with some freeze dried chives or like some minced onion, but I definitely recommend trying to get green onions. So those are like my main tips. Make sure you have good quality sesame oil, a good quality chicken broth. And then the rest it's like, mm, you know, you can do or do with or without it. So I mentioned earlier that I almost never make soups on the stovetop. I always use my Instant Pot. So now that it's boiling, what you wanna do is you want to drizzle in your eggs. So I turn off the heat, but for this recipe, it's kind of a waste because we turn off the heat as soon as it comes to a boil. And then I very gently just Pour in the eggs in a circular pattern like this, and you don't want to stir this. Definitely don't stir it, and you'll start to see the eggs kind of flour. So I think that's why, you know, some people call it egg drop soup, some people call it egg flour soup. Oh, it's so satisfying. But if you mix it right away, it will look cloudy, and if you boil it too crazy, then it will look cloudy as well. So what you wanna do is just kind of drizzle it in like this. So the heat is off, this is done. We want to add a little bit of sesame oil and I like to do a little bit on each bowl, but you can do it right in the pot if you're just going to serve it. So I do about a tablespoon and just drizzle it in over the top. Sesame oil is a finishing oil. It's not one that you really cook with. So you wanna always add it in at the very end of cooking. Oh my gosh, that smells, oh my gosh, that smells so good. <laughs> okay, so now your egg drop soup is done. That literally took like five minutes to make. So what you wanna do is take your ladle and kind of pull from the sides. So go in from the side here and just pull in towards the center to kind of distribute those eggs a little bit. And like I said, if you want this thicker before you add the eggs, you would add the cornstarch slurry to make it nice and you know, a little bit thicker, but I just don't, I don't miss it. Okay, oh, it's so good. It's so perfect for sick days. Whenever anyone in the family is sick, I make this for breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's like so soothing. Oh my gosh, look how freaking amazing that is. And then I like to top each bowl with a little bit of fresh green onion and a little bit of extra white pepper. And this is like out of control. Oh, so good. It smells sesame, like it smells like sesame oil. It smells like just like the green onion. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Brett's gonna be so happy when he finds out I make this. He's obsessed with egg drop soup. So that was my first recipe. Let's move on to the next one. We are going to start with one bag of potatoes O'Brien. 
Like, could you think of anything easier than using frozen potatoes <laughs> in a potato soup? Okay, next we're going to use eight ounces of cubed ham. I purchased mine just like this, but you can also do this recipe after Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, any of those holidays where you use a lot of you know ham and you might have some leftover. We'll do one can of corn. So simple. Then our spices are just one tablespoon of minced garlic and one teaspoon of real salt. Just throw that in there. We've got a quarter cup of baking crumbles. You can either cook and crumble this yourself or I just use the bagged, like pre-made bacon bits just to make it easy. And then we're gonna do two cups of chicken broth. And I always use two cups of water with two teaspoons of better than bouillon. So we'll just dump that straight over the top. And that's really it. I'm just going to mix it all together. And literally that's all you have to do. So I'm going to put the lid on my Instant Pot. Make sure that knob is set to the ceiling position. And then we're gonna cook this for three minutes on high pressure with a quick release. And then we'll add in just a couple extra ingredients. The potato ham chowder is done. So we are just going to, whoop, vent it. And this is what it looks like. It looks and smells amazing. To this, we are just going to add one cup of heavy cream. If you don't wanna do cream, I'm sorry. You could do half and half, you could do milk, but it just won't be quite as thick and creamy. So one cup of heavy cream, half a cup of sour cream. And then to that, we're just gonna add about half a cup of cheddar cheese or however much your heart desires. Like that one is so simple and easy. We've got potato ham chowder, so good for fall. The next soup I'm making is this amazing lazy lasagna soup. It has all of the amazing flavors of lasagna but without all the work. So it has some crumbled sausage in there, tomatoes, pasta, spinach, and it's topped with this amazing ricotta mozzarella parmesan mix. And so it just melts into the soup. It is seriously one of my favorites. To make our lasagna soup, first add one pound of cooked and cooled Italian sausage to your bag. You want to make sure it's not too hot, otherwise it can kind of melt the bag. So cook it up and let it cool, put it in the bag. To that, add one half of a large onion that's been chopped up. So after you add the onion, also add a tablespoon of minced garlic, three teaspoons of beef bouillon. You can use better than bouillon or you can use the powdered bouillon, which is what I'm using today. Next, add one 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes and one 24 ounce jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce. Last, we're gonna add two cups of dry penne noodles. I know it's weird to put in dry noodles into a freezer bag, but I promise it totally works and it's awesome. So put in two cups of penne noodles and that's it. Squeeze all the air out of the bag, close it up, and it's ready to freeze. To cook our lazy lasagna soup, first add three cups of water to your Instant Pot, and then we're going to empty out the contents of our bag into the pot. So this is important. We want to make sure that the noodles are on the bottom of the pot because we need the noodles to be submerged in the liquid during the pressure cook stage so then they cook evenly. If your ingredients are having a tough time coming out of the bag, you can just thaw it for about five minutes on the counter or you can run it under cold or warm running water for a couple minutes and it will just slide right out of the bag. Next, just put on the lid, turn the knob to ceiling, and then we're going to cook this for seven minutes on manual high pressure with a quick release. While the soup is cooking, you want to make the ricotta mixture. So in a medium sized bowl, add one cup of ricotta cheese, one cup of fresh mozzarella cheese, and one cup of Parmesan cheese. Mix this all together, and this is going to be the topping that we put on each bowl of our lasagna soup, and it just melts into the soup, and it's so creamy and delicious. It is amazing. Now, after your soup has released all of the pressure, open up that lid and give it a stir. You may need to break up any pieces if they are still frozen, but it's not a problem. Just break everything up and give it a stir so everything is dispersed because we're still going to let it kind of steam and simmer for just a second because we're going to add two cups of fresh spinach, 
or you can use kale, but I like the flavor of spinach, and just mix it in and let that spinach wilt down. So I like to serve this lasagna soup with a couple dollops of that yummy ricotta mixture, and then it, like I said, just melts down, and I like serving it with some crusty bread. It is one of my absolute favorites. For the soup, you will need one tablespoon of olive oil or butter, one large onion diced, one tablespoon of minced garlic, one bag of mini carrots, or it's about three cups chopped carrots, one whole bunch of celery, or about five cups, two to three fresh or frozen chicken breasts, half a cup of fresh curly parsley, two tablespoons of dried oregano, one and a half tablespoons of dried basil, two tablespoons of tarragon, one bay leaf, six cups of chicken broth, and I just use water with the right amount of better than bouillon to reconstitute it. I think it's like one teaspoon for one cup of liquid. An additional quarter cup of better than bouillon, and one cup of heavy cream. For the homemade egg noodles, you will need two cups of flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of white pepper or salt is fine too, two large eggs, half a cup of warm water, and additional flour as necessary. It's about half a cup to one cup when all is said and done. To start making our Instant Pot chicken noodle soup, first press the saute button on your Instant Pot, set it to high, and then add one tablespoon of butter or oil, and just let that melt down and then add your large chopped onion. I like to just let it sit and kind of sweat down until it's slightly translucent. While the onions are sweating down, this is when I like to start making my pasta dough for my homemade egg noodles. So first you need two cups of flour in a bowl and then I like to make a well in the center and then add your baking powder and white pepper or salt. Whisk this all together so we can combine all of those dry ingredients, and then make another well and add two large eggs and half a cup of water. Mix all these ingredients up to make a soft dough and once it gets kind of combined, I like to move from a spatula to my hands and just kind of knead it together a little bit. You're not like kneading it like bread dough, but you want it to come together. After everything is combined into a nice ball, just cover this with some plastic wrap or a clean towel and we'll come back to it in just a couple minutes, but we need to let it rest. So we'll go back to our soup and add the rest of our vegetables. You add your garlic, and then add your carrots and celery. Just mix this all together and let it saute for a couple minutes just to kind of get those vegetables a little bit softened. Next, add your chicken breast pieces. So here I have about three cups of chopped chicken breast pieces, but if you don't wanna cut them up beforehand, you can just throw in two or three large pieces, like frozen or fresh. With the chicken, add about three quarters of your fresh parsley. Next, in a small bowl, combine all of those spices together. So we have basil, oregano, tarragon, and bay leaf. Throw the bay leaf in your soup and then just mix up the rest of your spices and then sprinkle in about half and make sure you save the rest because we'll add those after pressure cooking. Now we'll just pour our chicken broth over all of that and then mix it all together. Place the lid on top of your Instant Pot, lock it into place, and then turn the sealing knob from venting to sealing. Now that our soup is pressure cooking, we can come back to our egg noodles. Just take that little ball dough out onto a floured surface and just give it an initial roll out. You wanna kind of tap it into a round disc, however far it will roll out, but we just wanna make sure this is generously floured the whole time. Dust the noodles again and then flip it over. You want to make sure that you're always flipping and flouring as much as possible to make sure nothing sticks on your work surface. Now just cover it with a clean tea towel or some plastic wrap and we'll come back to this in five minutes. All right, five minutes later, we're going to take the tea towel off of the noodles and that just gave time for the dough to just rest and relax so it wasn't so tight and elastic. Now you want to cut it into strips. So as you can see, I cut mine into quadrants so I had smaller pieces that were easier to work with. And then I'm gonna just take each one of those squares and then roll them out just a little bit and then cut them into long rectangles. You wanna cut the noodles so they're about a quarter of an inch thick and 
they will expand while they're cooking, so don't worry if they're too little. All right, now that we have these beautiful little noodles, toss them in a bowl with, you guessed it, more flour. And then I like to just shake that bowl and kind of throw it and toss it a little bit so everything is coated in flour. Next, press the saute button to bring it back up to a boil. And we're gonna add the rest of our parsley and the rest of our dried herbs back to the soup, along with that quarter cup of better than bouillon, and just mix that all in. We're gonna add just a little bit more flavor into the soup. Pressure cooking the soup kind of dampens those herb flavors, so I like to add the second half after pressure cooking, so then it just like livens up that flavor a little bit and it just tastes a lot better. <laughs> As soon as the soup has come back up to a boil, you can start adding your egg noodles. So just take your bowl of egg noodles from the fridge or the freezer or the counter and start sprinkling them into the soup. It's okay if the flour gets in there that is in the bowl because that also will help thicken the soup a little bit. I like to just give this a little stir to kind of distribute the noodles into the broth. And then you only have to cook the noodles about two or three minutes and as soon as they all float to the top and they're plump and they look good, you can usually test one to see if it's cooked all the way, you're done. So turn off your Instant Pot and then this is my favorite part, is add a cup of heavy cream to the chicken noodle soup if you wanna make it extra creamy. Oh, there's seriously nothing better than adding heavy cream to anything. It makes everything taste better. Let's get started by turning our Instant Pot to the high saute function, and then I'm going to add three to five pieces of thick cut bacon. Now, I definitely recommend using the thick cut bacon so then there's enough fat and flavor in the soup. So I have just a couple pieces of bacon that we're gonna add to our Instant Pot and crisp up. The bacon's done crisping, and I just scooped it out and put it in a separate bowl. Then you should have about a quarter cup of bacon grease in there, and that's totally fine. Just keep that in because we wanna keep that flavor and a little bit of that fat. So to this, we are going to add one tablespoon of minced garlic, one two pound bag of hash brown potatoes, and you can use regular potatoes if you like. I've got those instructions on my website. Next, we have two tablespoons of onion flakes, a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. And just like the last recipe, this one's so awesome because you can pre-prepare this and use it as a freezer meal. Just put all these ingredients in a bag and prepare it from frozen, so it's really easy. Okay, mix that around for a minute. And then we're going to add two cups of chicken broth. I always use two cups of hot water with two teaspoons of better than bouillon. Perfect. If you like, you can add a little bit of that bacon to cook in with it, but I prefer to sprinkle it on the top because I think it just kind of looks prettier, but you can also cook it in the soup as well. And that's it, we're gonna put the lid on it, we're gonna cook it for three minutes from frozen, and then we'll add a couple extra ingredients at the end. The loaded baked potato soup is ready to come out, so I just turn the knob from the ceiling to the venting position, and this is what it looks like. Now this is the fun part. After you pressure cook the loaded potato soup, you're going to take a potato masher and just mash these potatoes up about five or eight times just to kind of break up some of those potatoes. We don't want to make mashed potatoes, so we're just going to mash it up just a little bit to still have some chunks, but not too many. To this, we are going to add one cup of heavy cream because heavy cream just makes everything more delicious. If you don't want to use cream, you can use milk half and half. And then this is what makes it taste like loaded baked potato soup. It's one cup of sour cream. This is so good. That sour cream is really important because it makes it taste like an actual loaded baked potato and not just potato soup. And then we've got one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I always add extra on top of each bowl. I like to let that kind of melt down. I also like adding some of the bacon back into the soup but I also like having a lot of it to kind of put on top of each bowl, just because then it's really pretty. But we can put some of that in there as well. 
and that's it. This only cooked for three minutes. It used a frozen bag of potato hash browns and it tastes like you slaved over it all day. First, add your baggie to your bag holder. Like I said, these are so convenient. It's nice to make sure nothing tips over and spills ingredients everywhere. If you don't have them though, you can just keep your baggie in a large bowl while you're filling it, and then that will prevent anything from spilling over as well. So to your baggie, add one large chicken breast. This can be fresh or frozen. I just have a frozen one today. Next, add one can of drained corn, one can of black beans that are also drained and rinsed, half of a large onion that's been diced up, one small can of green chilies, one tablespoon of minced garlic, half a teaspoon of cumin, and 14 ounces of hot red enchilada sauce. I like buying the large 28 ounce can of the enchilada sauce and just making two freezer meals at the same time because this is a really easy freezer meal. And one can of diced tomatoes. And that's it for this freezer meal. Just squeeze all of the liquid out of it and close it up. And this one also does have a lot of liquid in it. So make sure to freeze it in an Instant Pot liner or a bowl or just kind of squish it on the sides to make sure that it will fit into your Instant Pot once it's frozen. When you're ready to cook this freezer meal, add one cup of water to the Instant Pot and then squeeze the contents of the bag into the Instant Pot. Like I said before, if you're having a hard time getting the ingredients out, just run it under some cool or warm running water and then it will slide right out. This is going to cook for 30 minutes on high pressure with a quick release. After your chicken enchilada soup has finished cooking, take the chicken breast out of the Instant Pot and either cut, cube, or shred your chicken, just whatever your preference is in the soup. We like serving this soup with tortilla chips, extra sour cream, cheese, avocado, a squeeze of lime, oh, just anything that you would put in Mexican food, just put it on top of that soup and you will be eating so good that night. So first we're going to start out by sauteing a half pound of thick cut bacon in the Instant Pot and then taking that out after it has crisped up. I've already done that here. And then I leave about two tablespoons of the bacon grease inside the pan. Next we're gonna add one chopped onion and I just use pre-chopped onion. <laughs> right in there with all of that bacon grease. And then we're gonna do one pound of Jimmy Dean sausage. I find that the Jimmy Dean brand is actually like worth splurging on. I don't really like using store brand sausage. This one just tastes really good. And since it's the main protein, I definitely recommend just spending a little bit extra to get the higher quality sausage. To the sausage and the onions, I'm adding two tablespoons of minced garlic. And then to this, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. If you don't like it spicy, then just do just a pinch of the red pepper flakes. You still want that flavor. And then you just, we're gonna use that little chopper masher thing that I bought on that Amazon video I did earlier this summer. And we want to just chop this all up. Try and lift up some of that fond on the bottom of the pot from the bacon. All those brown bits, that's all flavor that we want to suck off the bottom of the pot and scrape off. The meat and the onions are looking good. They don't have to be like 100% done, just like 90% done, because it's all gonna cook. Okay, to this, we are going to add one cup of chicken broth. So I have my chicken broth here. It's just six cups of water with six teaspoons of better than bouillon. I like to just do like one cup right at the beginning and then deglaze the pot. So the pot is still on saute mode. I'm just taking my Thermoworks spatula, my silicone spatula, it's the best one out there, and just scrape everything off the bottom of the pot. We really want to make sure that all that flavor is lifted off the pot. So one, we get that flavor and it tastes good. Second, because we don't want it to burn and get the burn notice. All right, it looks good. Okay, so to this we are going to add five potatoes. I think this is about five cups. Um, five or six potatoes. I find one regular like small to medium potato is usually about one cup. So I cut these up into little triangles like you can see here. It's very simple. Now we're gonna add the rest of our chicken broth. 
If you'd like to do a lower carb option, you can do cauliflower in place of the potatoes. If you like more meat, you can add an additional pound of sausage. I usually like to do two more cups of liquid when I do that. And that's it. I do not like to pressure cook with the crispy bacon in there because I feel like it kind of gets soggy. So I'm just going to cook this for one minute on high pressure. The reason it's only one minute is because everything else is cooked besides the potatoes and these potatoes are super tiny. We don't want to make mashed potatoes so we just want to cook these through. It only takes one minute. So we're gonna put the lid on and pressure cook for one minute. The Zupa Toscana is done. It only cooked for one minute and this is what it looks like. So you'll see when you take off the lid, there's kind of a red film on there. That's just some fat. If you use a spicy sausage, this will be really red. So if you don't like it, you can just use a skimmer and just take off some of that fat off the top. If it doesn't bother you, which it doesn't really bother me, you can just leave it. So to this, we are going to now add one bunch of kale that we chiffonaded. And I like to kind of massage it with my fingers or like with my hands a little bit just to um, tenderize the kale. So we are going to add one bunch or however much you want. If you don't like that much kale, don't put in that much kale. But we are just going to let this wilt for just a second so I kind of press it down. We don't want to crush up those beautiful potatoes, so you want to be really gentle. And you can see some of the potatoes have broken and then that skin on the potato turns into a little ribbon. It's really pretty, just swimming throughout the soup. And that kale only takes about one or two minutes to really wilt down. And then we'll add the rest of our bacon, or if you wanna save some for the top, you can always do that as well. And then the last ingredient, which is the best, is just one cup of heavy cream. If you don't wanna do heavy cream, you don't have to. It's really good without the cream, but we really like the cream. <laughs> now mix that in. And this is a showstopper. It's delicious. You can add a little bit of extra salt and pepper or crushed red pepper flakes if you like, but we love it just like this. Enjoy. We're going to start off with three slices of thick cut bacon and I've already gone ahead and crisped that and then leave that in the pot. To this, we are going to add half of an onion. About one cup of diced celery. Five cups of red potatoes and I just, I just cut them up into little tiny chunks like that. If you don't want to cut the red potatoes, you can also use the hash brown potatoes, but I just really like the color of the potatoes in this soup. I think it looks really pretty. And like just like the other soup, usually one red potato is about one cup. If they're a little bit smaller, they might be a little bit less than a cup. Wow, it already smells good. <laughs> All right, to that we're gonna add one tablespoon of minced garlic, three teaspoons of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of thyme, and three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper. I'm just gonna dump all of that in there. And then I like to let this saute for just a couple minutes to kind of embed all that bacony goodness into the vegetables. To the vegetable mixture, we are going to deglaze the pot with three tablespoons of white cooking wine. This really gives the soup like a really yummy flavor. And then one and a half cups of chicken broth. So I just use the one and a half cups of hot water and one and a half teaspoons of better than bouillon. Then I'm going to take the clam juice out of two cans of clams. So here I have a 10 ounce can and this one is a six and a half ounce can of clams. I just drain these. So I strain the juice and I'm gonna use that juice. Make sure you keep the clams because we're gonna add those later. So to this, we are going to add the clam juice. This is about one and a quarter cup. Make sure you strain it, otherwise you might get some like little piece of shell in there. Don't want that. And that's it. Make sure you scrape the bottom of the pot to deglaze it. We don't want it to burn. Gotta lift up all that bacon flavor. I also forgot just to add one bay leaf in there and then you can pressure cook. And now we're going to let this cook for two minutes on high pressure with a quick release. All of these recipes are so quick and easy. I really love that. Soup is done. Oh my, and it smells delicious. All right, first thing I'm going to do is just fish out that bay leaf because we don't eat bay leaves. That, we'll just take that out, throw that away. And then we're going to add the clams from the 10 ounce can and the six and a half ounce can. I made sure to rinse them because we don't want any little questionable pieces or any little shells. So we're going to add that and just let them kind of warm through. 
And you can also add the bacon now, or you can add it in, you know, on the top. Like I said, I like to do both. I usually make extra bacon actually for this recipe. Okay, this looks great. I am going to turn it back on saute mode for just a second, and then we are going to thicken this soup using three cups of heavy cream mixed with six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. All I do is I take the flour and I whisk it into the heavy cream and it becomes just kind of like a roux paste and it's really nice. So we've got our three cups of heavy cream mixed with six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Just gonna add that right into the soup. Okay, and then I just bring this to a boil and then that will thicken it up really nicely. It's fantastic. I like to serve clam chowder in a sourdough bread bowl or with really crusty classic French bread. It's amazing. Okay, and there you go, enjoy. First, take one ounce of dried wood ear mushroom and reconstitute it in two cups of warm water. We just want it to kind of rehydrate and get nice and big and squishy all over again. And usually I would do this just like, I would just throw the dried stuff into the instant pot, but this one needs to reconstitute a little bit more and we have to kind of rinse it off. So that's why we're gonna do it separate. We don't want any dirt or grit in our soup. Next, we're going to marinate the chicken. So first take one large chicken breast and mince it into really fine pieces. We want them really small, not like paste obviously, but just little tiny bits that are gonna float in through the soup. To this, we're gonna add one tablespoon of cornstarch, one tablespoon of meeting, or you can just use like a little bit of sugar water if you want, or omit if you don't have it, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and one half teaspoon of white pepper. Now just mix that up until it's nice and covered and then set aside while we prepare our vegetables. Wash and slice all your other vegetables and then we are going to just dump everything in the Instant Pot. It's so nice, it's like seriously the easiest soup ever. First, we're gonna add in our sliced and cleaned wood ear mushrooms. If you can't find these, just find them on Amazon or you can find them in an Asian grocery store. After the wood ear mushrooms, do one cup of sliced shiitake mushrooms, one cup of sliced carrots, one stalk of finely diced green onions, one cup of finely sliced bamboo shoots, and I like to get the baby ones, the baby young bamboo shoots, they're just way more tender. And lastly, seven ounces or one package of sliced enoki mushrooms. Next, add on the marinated chicken that we had from before, one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic, two teaspoons of freshly grated ginger, and six cups of chicken broth. Now give that a stir and then we're gonna put the lid on the Instant Pot, turn the knob to ceiling, and cook on manual high pressure for five minutes. A hot and sour soup has two parts, right? The hot and the sour. So the hot actually isn't like a spicy heat, it actually comes from white pepper. So you need to have white pepper for this recipe. And then the sour comes from the vinegar in the soup. So hot and sour, you have to have white pepper and vinegar in order to do this. So while the soup is cooking, we are going to mix together in a separate bowl, half a cup of soy sauce, a quarter cup of cornstarch, half a cup of white vinegar, one teaspoon of sugar, and two teaspoons of white pepper. Just whisk that up until the cornstarch is completely dissolved. Now that the soup is done, let's do a quick release and then open the lid. And we wanna bring this up to a boil. So turn the Instant Pot to high saute and bring the soup back up to a boil. Since it's already so hot, this shouldn't take very long. We want to make sure it's completely boiling. So then when we pour in that cornstarch slurry, the soup will thicken really nicely. So while stirring the soup, just pour in that cornstarch slurry right into the soup until it's completely incorporated. Then turn off the Instant Pot. Using the same cup that you had the cornstarch slurry in, crack two eggs and beat them up really well. Without stirring the soup, just drizzle in those eggs ever so gently in long, nice threads. Don't stir, otherwise it will just get cloudy. We want those long, beautiful ribbons of egg floating throughout the soup. So just pour them in in a circular motion and make sure the heat is turned off. 
After the eggs, add half a block or about nine and a half ounces of sliced tofu right in. It just needs to warm up a little bit so we don't need to cook it and make sure it doesn't fall apart or anything. Don't stir too crazy. And then we're just going to fold everything together. So take your spoon and go to one side of the Instant Pot and just kind of pull the eggs towards the center. And do that around the edges a couple times until it's all incorporated. Lastly, add three tablespoons of sesame oil right into the pot and then you are ready to eat. I like serving each individual bowl with a little bit of extra white pepper and sesame oil and some green onion to garnish and it is the most delicious, hearty, warm, comforting bowl of hot and sour soup you have ever had. Thanks so much for watching this video on my best soup recipes. You can get all of these recipes and more in my new cookbook, Enjoy, that is ready for pre-order right now. Make sure you check out this recipe video next and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.